Corona 11 is here. Head to coronarender.com to grab the latest build now. Click Try Now for the download page featuring versions of 3ds Max and Cinema 4D. Let's explore 3ds Max version together. The installation process is quite standard. Once you are done downloading, unpack the file, double click and proceed. It's nice to see that new images were added to installation wizard. I usually check the custom option just to make sure that uh, my 3ds Max version was found and now we can start testing. First thing you're likely to notice right after installing your Corona 11 is that we now have a new floating toolbar. And what that is, it's a Corona Power Tools toolbar. So how can we use it and when is it going to be useful? Because we've got five options here. Object Replacer, we've got Pivot Placer, then we've got Transform Randomization, and we also have Scene Cleaner. And last but not least, we've got Selection Randomizer. And I'm going to walk you through all of those elements. So first, we're going to go for Object Replacer because this is going to be something that I will be using a lot. And I will actually uh, talk to my students about it because I literally had a question about this yesterday. So what can we do if you've got a group of lights that aren't instanced and you want to replace them? You obviously will have to go through some deep menus to get to the point. but now, thanks to the new tool uh, coming with the newest Corona, we can really go for it in seconds. So first, I'm going to go to Object Replacer, click on it, and what we need to do is add the object that you're going to be interested in. That's a super simple solution here. Now, all the elements that I want to replace, I'm going to adjust select and start a preview to check if everything is correct. Because sometimes, well, I haven't even had a problem with it, but I really want to see what's going to happen before I click it. Okay, looks fine. Now we can decide whether we want instance, reference, or copy. And since I want to change all of those to instances for later use, because I will be changing this either by light mix or some kind of global setting, this is a godsend feature. Another cool use case for this is going to be related to any kind of SketchUp, Revit, or pretty much any file that you're being sent by somebody else. Or you just put a few objects as placeholders before showing it to, uh, before rendering something for a client. And you can see that replacing all of those elements wouldn't be the biggest problem. But imagine bigger scene, more objects, that would be a little bit annoying. And this is where this feature really shines because first of all, let's start a preview so we can see what's going on. But now I can go to advanced option, options and just go ahead and set the um, rotation. So for example, you can see that right now rotation is going to be sourced from the original object. Plus, since we're previewing, I can change the weight of any object. So that's the frequency at which we're going to see uh, the given element. And that's pretty cool because you have a little bit more control. Now let's just go ahead and apply. Everything is changed into instance. I'm just going to go ahead and locally rotate some of the objects and voila, this is a cool feature. Next, we've got Pivot Placer, which is essentially going to allow you to set your pivot to desired position. Effect Pivot Only, just to show you where exactly it should be. And now I can decide where I want it. I'm just going to be using center center minimum all the time because that's going to be the easiest thing to do there's another option in here and this is point selection so essentially what you need to do is select a vertex on your object and apply this is going to automatically change the pivot's position to where the selection of your vertex was very handy next tool is extremely helpful but many times when I was working with some scenes, I needed to randomize some objects and it was a little bit nightmarish because either I had to do it by hand or I had to figure out a way of uh, setting those objects as uh, some kind of scatter. And always it was a little bit uh, janky. So what we can do is uh, set random translation for transformation, rotation and scaling. In this case, let's just randomly rotate everything and that's it, it's really handy. Scene Cleaner will help you clean all the leftover junk in your scene, like cache, animation keys, empty layers, and many, many more. Purpose of this tool is to enhance your performance as storing too many variables like that at the same time 
tends to slow down your 3ds max over time so cleaning it up from time to time will really help you out there are two categories gray and red red elements are unreversible so clean once cleaned you won't get them back and then there's selection randomization that also works on editable poly so if you want to select only 50 percent of your elements we're just going to click got it or we want to select a given number of elements got it that's a very cool thing again and the fact that it works also in editable poly it's going to be quite massive for a lot of people because i know for a fact that a lot of people when selecting polygons they wish they would be able to select for example few of them at the same time to start editing faster. Corona Round Edges allows you to easily apply effects like weathering and staining on the edges of objects. This is particularly useful for objects with no thickness like leaves, photos, maps, paper, etc. So it's pretty much going to work with any open edge and it's going to start where the edge really is. So long story short, it creates a color gradient based on how far you are from the geometric edge. We also have some neat improvements for Chaos Scatter. Now our objects have the ability to look at. You can find it in transformations right below our rotation. So tick the look at, select an object that you want to force all of your scatter uh, to look at and select which axis you're going to be allowing it to look at. Now, all we need to do is manipulate the position of our object and all of the instances are going to follow. What's really cool about this is you don't have to do anything. All the other transformations, right? Like random rotation, scaling still applies. And we can also do the flop. Chaos Scatter Altitude Control brings upper and lower limits for scattering along X, Y, or Z axis, allowing you to create more realistic nature scenes. For example, you can set upper and lower limits for tree line, water line, and that's going to allow you to create more captivating scenery. It is extremely easy to set. Slope limitation can be found in surface scattering section. Defining limits is as simple as adding two values from and to. What is worth noticing is that we also have the curve control. Left to right on the curve is going to be the from to value, while top and bottom is going to be the distribution amount. Super nice feature. Thanks, guys. Next element on our list is Corona Tile Map. This one is a big thing for me. This map allows us to easily create sunning bathrooms, kitchens, walls, floors with procedural tiles. We can use bitmaps or procedural maps to define the colors of the tiles, repeat, randomize, or even pixelate an image into tiles depending on our needs. The Corona Mapping Randomizer and Multimap now come with by tile ID modes so that you can randomize results by each tile if desired. Additionally, Corona Tile Map also comes equipped with amazing tool which is additional outputs. Additional outputs will allow you to plug in not only the regular diffuse map, but you can now use the same tile map with different colors for example as uh, tile color one and and gap color two this is going to be black and white and now i can plug it in for example as displacement to allow myself to copy or let's say use the same values for my corona tile map while not creating multiple copies which would be normal in uh, let's say previous install installments of this software what is also amazing is that tile map is not the only map equipped with this additional output we also have additional outputs for color correction we've got uh, one for mapping randomization which is just amazing and three planner map and i was waiting for those for quite a while Going back to Corona Tile Map, which is the highlight of this moment, uh, we've got plenty of options for uh, patterns. We've got pretty much uh, 10 different tile patterns, but also one which is actually custom that you can work with on your own. And the formula is even specified here. So it's offset, height, and width, which is pretty much going to be amazing because you can create your own 
patterns. Again, that's super powerful. We can also add a little bit of corner radius, which is also going to be limited by tile width and height because sometimes you you just cannot go further than the smallest tile, which is super smart because you're not going to destroy your own creation because uh, you didn't know any better. And also we've got the gap blur. Corona tile map is definitely the best part of this update and I cannot wait to test it out in real scenario. There's also a couple of extra improvements, for example, normal and bump filtering that reduces the loss of detail when dealing with smaller resolution images. So you're pretty much going to retain a little bit of extra sharpness. You can also now use improved Intel denoiser, and that one is quite a huge update and you should definitely check it out. Users can now take advantage of the color management options. Those are pretty much the outputs and inputs that we talked about. Four versions of for Cinema 4D and 3ds Max. Also, Corona 11 for Cinema 4D comes with improved light lister. There's also a couple of extra updates that didn't get into this video, but we're going to probably talk about them at some point. Tell me which of the features presented in this video was your favorite. I personally love Corona Tile Map, but Power tools are also going to be part of my workflow from now on. Remember to like and subscribe this video right now, ring the bell for the notifications so you don't miss any of the webinars and videos that we post on this channel. Special thanks to Chaos Group for sponsoring this video, especially that I am a customer and I use their products. I'm Mike from Viz Academy. hope you learned something and take care.